Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, David. Good morning, Keith. Good to have you guys joining us this morning. Hope everybody's having a great day. By the way, this is not my cup. This is my wife's cup. I don't like, well, I do like llamas, but I, I wouldn't buy a llama cup. So it's my wife's cup, but I like it. It's big. It holds a lot of coffee. Um, good morning, CC. Uh, it's good to see you guys. Um, let me know where you're watching from. Love to see all the different places. I know we're reaching uh, South Africa, Serbia, um, different parts of Africa, Uganda. Um, England, Australia, and of course, United States. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Bubba. Virginia. Good to see you guys. Good morning, Ava. Yeah, let us know where you're watching from. Share this video. We're going to wait just a moment and let some others get signed on. Good morning, Nelly. Um, I'm excited about devotion this morning because it's for me. Those are the best ones, the ones that God speaks to your heart because when he helps us, then we can help others. And so I'm excited about that. Good morning, Jeff, Jeanette. Okay, we'll get started. Um, everybody's messed up. Everybody. Don't be fooled. Nobody's got it all together. I know some people want you to think they got it all together, but everybody's messed up. You're not the only one. I'm not the only one. And uh, we're all a work in progress. And I want to read to you, I had the word of God about a, a person that was had a serious issue, an, an embarrassing issue, a, an issue that was very private. But even though it was a private issue to them and very embarrassing and somewhat um, shamed because of this issue, um, they were well known. They were known for it. And so that's a hard place to be. You know, we all have issues. Every one of us, we all are messed up people. And some people's issues are known. Some people, others know about what your deal is. You know, maybe you have probably you struggle with addiction or you struggle with pornography or you struggle with whatever it may be. Um, and people are quick to judge. People are quick to pass judgment and talk about how you should be able to overcome this or that. But they themselves are in bondage to something. Everybody is messed up. And so it, it helps us to consider um, others before we consider ourselves and look at what other people are going through. Because a lot of times people are struggling with issues and it was brought on by some kind of horrific event, some, some catastrophic thing happened in their life, or they just simply fail. Every one of us are subject to that. Every one of us. I want to read to you in a uh, Mark the fifth chapter. Mark the fifth chapter, starting verse 25. Real short devotion. Please share this and let us know where you're watching from. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. <clears throat> and Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You know, the Bible says she was a certain woman. Well, that word certain means known. She was known. That certain woman, you know, here, here she comes. The one that is destitute. From being around others, the one that can't go into the temple, can't go into the church at that time. Any any woman that had an issue of blood like that, was they were thought to be unclean and unable to come in contact with anyone. So she was, for 12 years, had been this way. 12 years, 12 long years. You know, sometimes we wait to the very end to seek Jesus. Sometimes we try everything before we try Jesus. You know, she had went to every doctor she could find. She had went to every person looking for help. A lot of times we struggle. We want people's um, 
We want people to help us. We want people to, to give us encouragement. But God is an ever-present help in time of trouble. And so why do we wait to the last to turn to him? That's just something that came to me reading that. She was unclean, polluted, and was an outcast for 12 years. She had tried everything. She was embarrassed. She had pri a pri very private issue. But the thing that really stuck out to me was it says she was a certain woman, known. Maybe you're known today. Maybe you're, you're known to have a messed up situation going on. Maybe you're known to be messed up. Make no mistake about it. There are others just like you, some like you, some worse. You know, in this chapter, when you read it, Jesus is just healing everybody. It's on. He had, he had went across to uh, heal the demoniac, and he had just come back from that scene where he had cast out a legion of demons that went into a bunch of swine that uh, killed themselves in the sea and just an awesome event. He just come across, and as soon as, as soon as he comes across, here comes Jairus, who is a leader of the synagogue, and at that time was well known in the town, and the, Jesus was facing great persecution. The, the religious people didn't want him to be successful and to succeed in his ministry. They want him to fail because he was rocking their boat. But here comes Jairus, who was one of them, one of the hierarchy, desperate. See, that's another thing. When we get desperate, we do things we normally wouldn't do that our pride won't allow us to do. When we get desperate, pride goes out the window and we get to a place of humility. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be humble and meek. He came to Jesus because his daughter, ironically, of 12 years of age, I say ironically because here's a woman suffering from a 12-year issue, and then here's a, his daughter, Jairus' Jairus's daughter that's 12 years old that is very sick, and he wanted him to come and heal her. So Jesus is on his way to heal her. And that's when this thing happens. That's when this great, marvelous event happens. This woman who shouldn't be there, she shouldn't be there. She shouldn't be in that crowd. She shouldn't be where she can touch people because she was looked down upon. She was unclean. She was a certain woman. She was known. She shouldn't be there. She found Jesus. She heard about Jesus, and she went to him, and she touched the hem of his garment and was healed immediately because of her faith reaching out to him. And when that happened, immediately... She knew she was touched. He says, who touched me? Who touched me? Now, last night in prayer, I'm thinking, God, I need something from you. I need something from you greatly because I'm struggling. I'm a messed up person. There's times in my life when I don't understand why I can't seem to get things together. But then God showed me those that get things from him, those that get anything from God come by faith. Faith is not feeling worthy. Faith is not feeling like I deserve it. Faith is I'm desperate for him. I'm desperate for him. I want him no matter what. I need you, Lord. I know I'm not worthy to come in your presence. I know I don't deserve it because I'm, there's nothing good about me, God. But I need you. I need you more than I need air. I need you. And when you come to God that way, in that humility, and that brokenness, and that meekness, God moves mightily. Because, see, we're so full of pride, and we're so full of walls. We're, we're trying to keep walls out. We, want, we don't want people to see who we really are. We don't want people to know that we struggle. And you know what would be the greatest thing in the world if everyone knew? Because everybody's struggling with something. Everybody's dealing with something. And when you see others on Facebook or, or on Instagram or Twitter or wherever, and you see people that seem like they got everything together. They always post the best pictures. They always post the wonderful shots of what's going on in their lives. They never post the bad things. They never post how they're struggling today. They never post that, how, how things are not working out in their family. Their children are giving them a hard time. They're having trouble with their wife or their husband. Never post any of that. It's always the good things because we want people to think we got it all together. I don't have it all together, and I know I'm not the only one. Somebody comment, I don't have it all together because I know I'm not the only one. I don't have it all together. I'm a messed up person. I am. But here's the good news. Jesus says, even though I'm a messed up person and even though um, I fall short of the glory of God, he says I'm more than a conqueror through, his, through him. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. She was known as a certain woman. But when she touched the hem of his garment and was healed, Jesus called her daughter. Listen, y'all. Everybody knew this woman. Everybody knew who she was and what her deal was. As intimate and private as her problem was, it was it was it was in it was 
the news. Everybody knew it. Jesus called her daughter. Why did he do that? Because he wanted to heal her spirit. He wanted her to understand that you're healed physically, but there's still going to be people that are still going to remember the certain woman. There's going to be people that still remember who you were, what your problems are, how you were messed up, and they're going to judge you. And they're going to put you down. They're going to shun you. They're not going to be around you. They're going to talk about you behind your back. But I want you to know that it's not enough for me to say you're healed. I call you daughter. I adopt you. You're mine. And that is the power of forgiveness in God. That even though everybody knows who I am and knows what I've struggled with and, and some things they don't know, God still knows intimately and yet He calls me son. He calls me His son. He says that, I can be his child. I'm his. The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart and saveth them such as be of a contrite spirit. Many people are broken hearted today, but they put on a smile. They put on a big smile because they don't want you to see. They don't want you to see their heart. They don't want you to see that they're struggling with anxiety, depression, fear. Many people are. And you know, when you talk to people, sometimes you can hear it in their voice. You can hear fear. You can hear, I was talking to someone recently, I could hear the fear in their voice about COVID. You can hear it. And the, it, it's, it's something they're living with. It's something that's causing them to, to act a certain way and not live the, the abundant life that Jesus wants us to have. Jesus told her, he said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Listen, when Jesus calls you son or daughter and you're made whole, don't walk in shame. Don't walk in humiliation. Don't walk in embarrassment. Walk in peace. Not as the world gives, because Jesus says, peace I leave with you. I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. People say, man, you're not, you're not, you're not worried. You're not afraid of what's going to happen in 2021. I'm not. Am I disappointed? Yes, I really am. Am I struggling with some things? Yeah. But I'm not afraid because it's, I know the one that has this thing in control. And he's my daddy. He's my father. He calls me son. He calls me his child. He calls you his child. And no matter what anybody says about me, or no matter what anybody tries to label me, Jesus says, no, you're not, at, you're not that certain person. You're my daughter. You're my son. The Bible says, but as many, many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. I'm born of the Most High God. That's who I belong to. That's the family I'm a member of. This woman moved and acted on faith, and she was touched and she was healed. As soon as that happened, Jesus goes to Jairus' house where his daughter, who was 12 years old, had died. He had an issue. This man was well known in the neighborhood, very well respected, had it all together, probably had a lot of money, struggling. So they were all messed up. We all got stuff going on. He, his daughter, he loved his daughter, and she, had, she was dying. She had died. He goes to his house, and he raises her from the dead. It's just amazing when you read this through this chapter how everybody's messed up. You got a guy living in the tombs, in Mark 5, living in the tombs, cutting himself, crying day and night. Jesus goes over there and touches him and heals him. Nobody could do anything with him. Nobody wanted anything to do with him. They tried to chain him. They tried to put the world, that to subdue him with worldly things. God says, no, I'm going to set you free. Touches the woman, the woman touches him with the issue of blood. That certain woman becomes his daughter. Jairus' daughter is completely healed. Him being a ruler of the synagogue, I know he was probably ostracized or looked down upon by his peers because he reached out to Jesus in a time when Jesus was being persecuted, but he was desperate. If we ever get to the place in our country where we're desperate for the Lord Jesus Christ and not for power, not for fame, not for money, and we get desperate for God, we're going to be so filled and so joyful and so peaceful. And I say that to me today because I, I God, I need something from you. And uh, video views don't do it. 
Likes don't do it. Shares don't do it. I thought they did. I thought they did. I thought if I got a lot of views that, that that would give me joy. I thought if I got a lot of likes, that would give me joy. See, the platform that social media is a, a very tricky thing because you have a way to reach people, but you also have a way for Satan to reach you. He can work on your pride and your ego. And what I have discovered is when I seek Jesus desperately, that's, that's the peace. And I don't seek him, Lord, give me a big ministry. Lord, give me a lot of views. Lord, give me a lot of people to want to share. No, God, I just need you. I just need you. And all I need, really, is to know that I'm your son and that you're pleased with me. Who touched me? Who touched me? What do you mean, Lord? All these people around you, everybody's touching you. What are you talking about? Mm -mm. My daughter just touched me. My son just touched me. There's one desperate for me, and that's the one that I'm looking for. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be accepted in his sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you.